Ever stumbled upon vintage photographs that make history come alive? Gear up history buffs, we're traveling back in time to the Titanic era. Forget the cinematic tales, this ship was a marvel in her own right. Long before Hollywood took notice, Titanic was set to traverse from Southampton to NYC, promising adventure and luxury. Imagine 882 feet of opulence and innovation, spanning 10 lavish decks. The Titanic wasn't just a ship, she was a floating marvel of her era. From the high society elites to hopeful immigrants, this ship symbolized dreams and aspirations for many. But before diving into the chilling events, let's roll back and gaze upon 10 jaw-dropping photos of the Titanic in all her glory, before fate took its course. Number 1. Titanic's Life Vests Alright, imagine flipping through an ancient photo album and landing on an image that tells a story beyond the frame. Dive with me into one such photo, from a passenger who narrowly missed the tragic fate of the Titanic. This photograph vividly showcases the life vests of the Titanic, specifically designed to ensure the safety of over 2,000 individuals, crew included. Made from a combination of canvas and cork, these vests might appear more artisanal than advanced. Held together merely by fabric strings, they had an uncanny weight to them, but no one could question their buoyancy. However, there was a tragic catch. When the Titanic met its unforeseen destiny, many distraught passengers took a leap of faith off its edges. The vests, instead of being lifesavers, often worked against them due to their design leading to unconsciousness upon impact with the chilling waters. This design mishap resulted in numerous casualties from broken necks, drowning, or the deadly embrace of hypothermia. Oddly enough, even after the Titanic's calamity, cork remained a favorite for life vests until after World War II. The haunting recollections of the Titanic passengers and similar heartbreaking events drove the evolution of life vest designs. And in a twist of irony, a few of these very Titanic vests survive today. Ready for a shocker? Their historical significance and design flaws haven't deterred enthusiasts. One even fetched an eye popping $119,000 at an auction. So, what's your take on this? Would you bid on such a relic? Drop your thoughts in the comments. Number 2. Third Class Passengers Ever wondered how life looked beyond the grand ballrooms and luxurious cabins on the Titanic? Here's a picture. Thousands of hopes, dreams, and stories packed into the third class, often referred to as steerage. Boarding the Titanic, these passengers might not have had the luxury of spacious suites or exclusive dinners, but what they experienced was no less monumental. On the Titanic, third-class or steerage passengers weren't just cramped into spaces, as commonly perceived. They shared communal bathrooms, enjoyed meals together in dedicated dining areas, and caught dreams in four bed cabins. Now, you might think, well, that's what third-class means, right? But here's where it gets interesting. Compared to the life many had left behind, the Titanic steerage felt almost royal. The vessel's third-class quarters were even likened to second-class accommodations on other steamers of that era. Sure, their spaces were limited and they might not have had the lavish amenities the first and second classes boasted. But one significant luxury was that the Titanic didn't require its third-class travelers to carry their own grub, which was pretty much the standard for many vessels back then. Imagine the joy of not having to pack meals for a transatlantic journey. While these accommodations were situated closer to the bustling hum of the engines, every cabin in this section still had the perks of running water and electricity. Picture this, single men waking up to the salty air in the bow, while families and single women resided in the stern, with cabins accommodating larger groups and often uniquely shaped to fit the ship's contours. The Titanic's third class wasn't just about sleeping and eating, there was a communal spirit. A shared room became their entertainment hub where passengers could delve into books, challenge each other to card games, or simply share stories. And while they couldn't access the ship's gym or pool, that didn't dim their spirits. They created their own moments, with impromptu dances and gatherings. But here's the part that tugs at the heartstrings. The majority of these third-class travelers were immigrants. Picture over 700 souls aboard, each holding a vision of the American dream, seeing the Titanic as their vessel of hope. Yet, fate was cruel. Only a quarter of these dreamers survived the sinking, with only a handful of men among them. So, while the tales of the Titanic often shimmer with luxury and grandeur, there's an equally poignant story lurking beneath, a tale of hope, dreams, and untold resilience. Number 3. The Titanic's Construction Ever wondered how much blood, sweat, and steel went into creating the legendary Titanic? Let's set sail into history. The Titanic wasn't just another ship. It was White Star Shipping's audacious answer to the booming transatlantic travel business. Picture a time when ships were the uber of international travel. There were many, but White Star Shipping aimed for the crown by building an unparalleled marvel. And so, in 1909, at the bustling Harland and Wolf shipyard in Belfast, construction began. But here's the catch. They were also building her sister, the Olympic, right alongside. Building these giants wasn't a walk in the park. Imagine trying to fit a square peg in a round hole. The shipyard had to literally tear down three of its slipways and build two colossal ones from scratch to accommodate the Titanic and the Olympic. And manpower? 
a whopping 14,000 workers. It was like building a small city that floats. Now, picture this, crafting Titanic's frame took more than a year, and they wrapped up the shell plating by October 1910. Fast forward to the 1990s, and some brainy folks believed the steel plates on the ship turned brittle in the cold, which might have played a tragic role during that fateful night. By the standards of Titanic's era, the steel was top-notch. But, just like comparing your granddad's phone to yours, metallurgy had evolved big time over the decades. As majestic as the ship's tail is, it's also tinged with sorrow. The process wasn't all smooth sailing. Safety? A luxury back then. The result? 246 injuries, with 20 being grievous, including amputations and traumas from falling steel. Moreover, the Titanic demanded a grim toll, six souls on the ship during its making. Two more met their fate in the shipyard. One heartbreaking incident even saw a worker's life snuffed out by a rogue timber. Number 4. Titanic's Captain and Purser. Hey! Have you ever wondered what might have been going through the mind of Captain Edward J. Smith during the Titanic's final hours? Let's paint a picture. There's this evocative photograph, frozen in time. On one side, Captain Edward J. Smith, the steely-eyed British captain of the Titanic. Beside him stands the ship's purser, Hugh Walter McElroy. The story behind the snap? A passenger took it in Queenstown, Ireland, three days before fate played its cruel game. Both these men? They didn't make it out. Now, rewind a tad. Three days post Titanic's grand departure from Southampton, Captain Smith's Sunday was pretty standard. He toured his majestic ship, probably nodding in approval. But, for reasons unknown, he overlooked a safety drill. He held a church service instead. Then, gathering his officers, he worked out the ship's position. They calculated an impressive speed, 22 knots. For a ship that size, that was quite the achievement. As the evening of that fateful April 14, 1912, draped the ship in darkness, the weather did a 180. Thermometers plummeted, and the North Atlantic took on an eerie calm, mirroring the sky. This tranquility masked the treacherous icebergs lurking in the cold depths, especially common during spring. Despite this, Captain Smith, with confidence perhaps stemming from years at sea, decided against slowing down. He must have believed that his team could spot and steer clear of any lurking ice mountains. But, as destiny would have it, when the Titanic kissed the iceberg, Captain Smith wasn't on the bridge. The aftermath was panic, quick assessments, and the grim realization by Titanic's designer that the unsinkable was sinking. By 2.20 a.m., April 15, the Titanic was submerged. Captain Smith's last moments? Shrouded in mystery. Was he heroically saving a child, as some stories suggest? Or was he commanding his ship till the end? The sea kept that secret. His body was never found. Captain Smith's choices during the voyage stirred debates. Some say he was reckless for not slowing down. Others argue that, based on his vast experience, he genuinely believed he could steer the ship clear in time. And why wasn't he on the bridge during the crucial moment? The questions linger. Number 5. The boy on the Titanic's deck. Have you ever looked at a photo and thought it was straight out of a movie? Well, in the hit 1997 film, Titanic, there's a scene that blurs the lines between real and real. Remember that young lad totally engrossed with a spinning top on deck? Not just cinematic imagination folks, it's borrowed from reality, a snapshot from history. The photo was taken aboard the Titanic, only days before it whispered its last story to the vast ocean, on April 11, 1912. Now, here's the kicker, that boy, Robert Douglas Spedden, was not a figment of Hollywood's imagination. Six years young, with life and dreams in his eyes, he was traveling first class, thanks to his wealthy lineage. After holidaying in Algeria, the Titanic was the luxurious vessel chosen to ferry him and his family back to Tuxedo Park, New York. Picture this, a small boy, playing, while the looming tragedy of the Titanic casts a shadow. But, destiny had a twist. When the icy jaws of the iceberg bit into the ship, our young friend was nestled in dreamland. A brief wakefulness, a promise of stargazing by his nurse, Elizabeth Burns, and then back to slumber. When dawn broke, Robert found himself cocooned in a lifeboat, a survivor of the night's horrors. But, the universe has a peculiar sense of irony. Just three years later, in 1915, Robert's journey on Earth came to an abrupt halt. At a time when cars were scarce and roads more peaceful, he faced the tragic irony of being among Maine's earliest recorded automobile accident victims. It's haunting how fate weaves its tails, isn't it? Number 6. Launching the Titanic. Ever thought about the literal splash a ship like Titanic would make? Let's rewind to May 31, 1911, at 12.15 p.m. Picture a bustling Belfast, with over a whopping 100,000 curious eyes waiting for a sight that'd go down in history. Among the sea of people, VIPs like J. Pierpont Morgan and J. Bruce Ismay had a front row seat, observing from a grandstand made just for them. The air was tense with anticipation. And then, with Robert Falconer Keith's command, the Titanic gracefully slid into the river Lagan. How do you ensure such a massive ship smoothly sails down a slipway? You ask. 
A quirky mix of 22 tons of soap and tallow did the trick. Sounds like Titanic's first spa treatment, doesn't it? In a break from the champagne smashing norm, White Star Line decided to keep it low key, no official naming or christening for Titanic. Once in the water, the real work began. Over the next year, think of the Titanic as a house getting fitted with luxurious interiors. There were engines to install, funnels to erect, and cabins to furnish. After a glance at her sister ship, Olympic's maiden voyage, a few design tweaks were made to the Titanic, making her the beefier sibling. But with great size came a delay in construction. Interestingly, this delay intertwined with the Olympic needing repairs after a collision. Who knows, had Titanic been completed earlier, its fate might have been different. Before the infamous voyage, the Titanic went through rigorous sea trials. And guess what? It passed with flying colors. Number 7. The Iceberg That Sank the Titanic Can you imagine capturing, in one fleeting photograph, the very moment before a significant event in history? Dive with me into the frigid waters of the North Atlantic. It's 1912. The Titanic, in all her glory, is forging her path. But two days before she met her chilling end, Captain W. Wood, helming another vessel, the SS Etonian, was about to click a moment in time that still sends shivers down our spine. Ever think a hobby could capture a tragic tale? Captain Wood, a passionate photographer, spied an awe-inspiring iceberg through his lens. The sheer magnitude of it was daunting, but the mystery unravels further. Our captain wasn't just content with his photographic feat, he meticulously penned down the iceberg's exact coordinates. An eerie coincidence? Those coordinates eerily mirrored the location where Titanic met her fateful iceberg, plunging over 1,500 souls into the icy abyss. Upon anchoring in New York, Captain Wood didn't delay. He promptly developed the photograph. Sharing this chilling piece of history, he mailed a print to his great-grandfather. In a bold proclamation on the photo, Captain Wood etched, Iceberg taken by Captain Wood, SS Etonian in 41 degrees 50 feet N latitude and 49 degrees 50 feet W longitude on April 12th at 4 p.m. As history tells us, the Titanic met her chilling end just two days later. Over the sands of time, countless photos of icebergs strewn in Titanic's trajectory have emerged. Yet, the authenticity of Captain Wood's capture is undeniable. How? You ask. The shape of the iceberg in Wood's frame aligns uncannily with the illustrations and accounts of witnesses from that fateful night. To think that amidst the vastness of the ocean, one man, through his hobby, might have captured the silent assassin of the Titanic. Doesn't it make you wonder how many untold stories are frozen in time? just waiting for someone to uncover? Number 8. The Insufficient Lifeboats Can you believe that once upon a time, gigantic ships didn't prioritize lifeboats for everyone on board? It sounds like a twisted fairy tale but it's true. Let's unpack the story that made lifeboats a global mandate. Ever seen that haunting snapshot of the Titanic, with its glorious bridge and a lone lifeboat in the foreground? Reverend F. M. Brown captured it. Little did he know that this seemingly innocuous photo would represent a pivotal concern surrounding one of history's most catastrophic maritime tragedies. Post the iceberg collision, the alarming lack of lifeboats on the Titanic became a hot topic. But here's where things get interesting. Technically, the Titanic was compliant with the Merchant Shipping Act of 1894, the rules du jour. As per the Library of Congress, this regulation necessitated ships over 10,000 tons to have just 16 lifeboats, accommodating 990 souls. Sounds minimal, right? And yet, the Titanic, weighing a whopping 50,000 tons, outdid these regulations by having 20 lifeboats on board. The irony? These boats could house merely half the ship's occupants during the unfortunate night. But why such scant lifeboat provisions? Here's the kicker. Massive liners with sophisticated compartments were considered unsinkable. Their very design, including Titanic's 16 watertight compartments, were deemed more than sufficient to keep them afloat. Hence, lifeboats weren't rescue vessels for everyone, they were viewed more as a last-minute escape pod for a few. The tragic aftermath? Of over 2,000 passengers, a mere 700-ish got on these lifeboats. Even more heartbreakingly, some lifeboats were launched under capacity, due to fears about the lowering mechanism's reliability. Case in point, one of the initial lifeboats, designed to accommodate 65, set sail with only 25 aboard. A gut-wrenching twist to this tale? Captain John Smith had scheduled a lifeboat drill on the day the Titanic met her icy fate, but, in a bid to have one last Sunday service before his retirement, he postponed it. And the world forever wondered, what if? But from tragedies, come lessons. In the Titanic's wake, the International Convention for the Safety of Life at Sea, SOLAS, decreed, all passenger ships must carry lifeboats for every soul on board. Now, SOLAS insists ships maintain lifeboats to fit 125% of their total capacity. A silver lining, perhaps? What do you think? Would you board a ship without enough lifeboats today? Number 9. The First Class Dining Room Ever imagine dining in opulence, floating in the middle of the vast Atlantic? Picture this. The Titanic's dining room. It wasn't just any dining hall. It was the crowning jewel of oceanic luxury. Spanning the Titanic's entire width and stretching 114 feet, 
this majestic space could easily host 500 elite guests. Think of it as the grand ballroom of gastronomy. Imagine gazing around at the pristine white-themed elegance while sharing stories and smiles with other affluent travelers. And the food? Oh, the spread was what culinary dreams are made of. You'd find succulent lobster dancing alongside Egyptian quails on the menu. Then, Imagine a plate of juicy peaches dusted beside the richest caviar, and luscious grapes that looked as if they were picked just moments ago. You know it's time to dine when you hear the iconic notes of, the roast beef of Old England, played by the ship's bugler, Peter W. Fletcher. And what a sight it was. Men in sharp dinner suits, women shimmering in contemporary attires, with hints of exotic perfumes wafting and glittering jewels reflecting the dining room's grandeur. But wait, there's more. For those who craved an extra pinch of luxury, there was the a la carte restaurant. Drenched in British architectural brilliance, it was the zenith of fine dining on the Titanic. Cozy oak seats, tables that whispered tales of extravagance, and every inch dripping with opulent furnishings. The finishing touch? An orchestra serenading with melodies, wrapping the wealthy diners in a blanket of serenity, elevating the dining experience to levels unimaginable. Hey, ever wish you could have witnessed this grandeur? Well, hit that like button, and let's dive into more such tales from history's most iconic ship. And perhaps, share with us, what would be your go-to dish on such a menu? Number 10. Titanic's Gymnasium Have you ever wondered where the elite passengers of the Titanic would burn off those decadent dinner calories? Well, believe it or not, the Titanic flaunted its own exclusive gymnasium, which, for its era, was like discovering a spaceship amidst horse-drawn carriages. Imagine stepping into a radiant room filled with white oak paneling, reflecting light off gleaming tiles. An intricate oak display caught the eye of many, showcasing an illustrated cross-section of an Olympic-class ship and a world map with the White Star Line's travel routes marked distinctly. Now, here's where it gets even more fascinating. This gym was no ordinary space. It housed gadgets that would make modern-day fitness buffs gape. From electric camels, yep, you heard that right, and horses that simulated real-life motions to rowing machines, punching bags, and even the early ancestors of our stationary bikes. To get a taste of this luxury, first-class passengers would hand over a shilling for a ticket from the purser, unlocking an experience with the fitness gadgets of the future, all under the watchful eye of T.W. Macaulay, the in-house fitness guru. However, the Titanic, in all its grandeur, still had its quirks. This gymnasium was no exception. The ship had specific hours for different genders and age groups to keep things proper. Marketed by the White Star Line as not just a place for beneficial exercise but also for endless amusement, many passengers were particularly smitten with the electric camel. Imagine riding a camel in the middle of the Atlantic. But as with many tales of the Titanic, this one too has a somber end. T.W. Macaulay, the man who introduced many to the joys of the electric camel, chose to remain in his beloved gym during the ship's final hours ultimately going down with the Titanic. What would you do to experience such a unique gym? We hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.